Joining us now, a man who can offer some insight into what it means to be a 10-plus win season, Harvey Unga, the all-time leading rusher in BYU football history. Harvey, great to talk to you again. Welcome back to the show. Hey, what's up, my dudes? I appreciate it. Mitch Matthews made a comparison yesterday when he was a freshman in 2009, and he was uh, you know, just getting his licks in as a BYU football player for the first time around Dennis Pitta and you and Max yeah. Hall and some of the greats. He said that the competitive spirit that was existent back then in spring football is now back in 2015. How do you read into those comments from Mitch Matthews? Oh, I think it's great. I mean, like you said, Mitch was there when we had uh, you know a 10-plus winning season. Uh, he, he understood the camaraderie. He knew how close the guys were. He, uh, you know, he felt that competitive spirit between, you know, all the guys on offense as well as defense. Um, you know, we, we were out there competing every single day against each other, uh, offensively, defensively. And, um, he, he also knew how close, you know, like you said, Max and Dennis and Austin and, um, you know, all of us were on the offense, uh, as well as, you know, all the offensive linemen and, and, uh, you know, everybody else that was out there with us. So for, for him to have that comparison and that feeling, Man, is a, I, I'm praying that that's the case because I think, you know, with, with the weapons that they have, they're going to be dangerous if, if that's the case, if they can, uh, you know, pull together and, and really, uh, you know, get things tied, tied together and, and start rolling. Harvey, how do you create that kind of competitive spirit? You know, I, <laughs> to be honest, you you got to find that guy. Um, I don't, to be honest, I don't think you can really create that kind of, Competitive spirit, I think it's just in you. It, 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 it's an innate thing. Um, to, to say that you, you create something like that, um, I mean, you could you can try to, to create competitiveness, but in, in my opinion, I think that that just that's just who you are. It's an, it's an innate thing. And, and with Max and Dennis and Austin and myself, um, whether we were playing you know bocce ball or chess or ping pong in the locker room, it was a, it was a competition. Um, so anywhere we went, you know, there was a competitive spirit, regardless of what we were doing. Um, and, and to be honest, I think, you know, that, that just comes within somebody. You know, it's just a dog in them that, that comes out. So it's the, it sounds like you're describing the personality of certain individuals who happen to be good players. Uh, if, that's, if that's the case, does BYU have those guys on this team, in your opinion? Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. They, they've got tremendous athletes over there. Um, you know, guys with, with good competitive spirit, but at the same time, they, you know, they're also great football players. So um, I, I definitely think they, they have those kind of guys and uh, the potential to, to really be a 10-plus winning team. Who stands out most in your mind when you're looking at those personalities slash great football players on this BYU football team? Um, I, obviously, I'm biased. I, I'm, I'm big, again, you know, with the running backs. I think it, it definitely, for me, I look at those guys. I think Jamal is, is a phenomenal player i think he's one of those guys that you know the running backs have uh, somebody to look up to and, and can emulate in regards to that and then Aldi brown has definitely been stepping it up um you know he's been getting quite a bit of love in the spring and um you know i think it, it definitely helps to have those guys and then who, who better than uh you know the heisman candidate uh Taysom. you know i think if anybody that can lead this team it, it's him and his competitive spirit i think you know we've seen him every single saturday he, he brings it and, uh, you know, those guys can definitely do it. Um, and, and to be honest, I think on the defense, Bronco just brings it out of the guys. You, you don't have to really have one, one guy um, that, that has that dog in him. I think Bronco's done a great job of recruiting those guys that have, you know, that kind of dog in them. And um, he, he definitely brings it out of the guys. And, and, you know, the guys that can't really hang, they, uh, they get weeded out. That's an interesting comment that defensively it's Bronco because one thing I noticed last year, Harvey, was to be a leader, you have to have accountability and you have to be good. You can't be an okay right. player and be like, let's go, rally around me. I barely play. <laughs> On the defense, yeah. I thought that it was tough because Alani Fua was hurt, Craig Bills was hurt. Right. Those were going to be the two guys. So who, right. who stands out to you uh, on the defense of guys that could maybe emerge as leaders besides Bronco leading that group? I mean, Bronson, Bronson was, you know, if anything, that, that, that was one of the guys that, that in my mind, um, that, that would be, you know, one of the big leaders. And then, um, I'm trying to think of the, the linebacker course, because a lot of the times, in my opinion, I think it definitely starts with, with a linebacker core. When you got guys, um, 
you know, as far as the linebackers that are out there leading, uh, it'll make a difference. But um, to be honest, I haven't paid too much attention to, to the defensive side of the ball. I've been watching the offense more than anything. All about that um, action, boss. I'm not gonna lie. I, I yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm biased. <laughs> I, love, I love watching those boys on offense do their thing. But um, uh, I'm, I'm sure you know there, there's guys that will emerge. Who you know? Who are they? It, it, you never know. I mean. Things happen. Guys, guys kind of emerge during the spring. And like I said, I'm biased, so I'm hoping Morgan is, is one of those guys that, that uh, can, can step up and guys will rally around him because uh, he's family. And, and like I said, I'm biased. <laughs> tell, tell us about Morgan Unga, who I believe is playing uh, – is he playing safety? Yeah, he's playing safety. Is he a he's, cousin? He's a kid's a specimen. Yeah, so his, his dad and my dad are brothers, so we're really cousins. <laughs> and, and what's the expectation with him and kind of what's his story? He's been a uh, spring football surprise. He, um, I mean, he, he just got off the mission not too long ago in uh, January. Uh, came off the mission, you know, looking like a, a NFL starting safety. Um, it, it, the guy that I, I think about when, whenever I picture Morgan is a guy like uh, Cam Chancellor. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Morgan's got speed. He, he's tall. He's athletic. Um, he, he, you know, he's got the, uh, the weight behind him. Um, and, and I know, you know, he, he's not the kind of guy that's going to shy away from, from hitting somebody. So, uh, you know, I think he's got a ton of potential there um, to be a huge asset on the defense. Um, and the kid has heart, man. I've never seen a kid work so hard in my life. Um, so, you know, I think the sky's the limit for him as far as, you know, what he could do for the defense and then coming in. BYU's all-time leading rusher, Harvey Unga, with us on BYU Sports Nation. Harvey, before we get to uh, your career and what's happening, I know you're just at the NFL Veteran Combine. I want to ask you one more question, and that is our Twitter question today. What is the one thing that BYU football needs to return to a pattern of 10 plus win seasons? Um, what is the thing? Yeah. I think Mitch hit it on the head. I, I think, you know, just, just having a team cohesiveness is, is something that, that is definitely going to be needed. Um, because, like you said, Taysom's the guy now, but when he goes down, if he goes down, and, and God forbid that he does, um, you know, you're going to need that, that team cohesiveness to, to really, you know, pick up the slack. And, and, and in, in any case, I mean, if any guy goes down um, offensively, defensively, um, I think when, when you got somebody that you trust, that you know is, uh, is, is a team player, has bought into the system, um, it, you know, it makes – a total difference, and I say that because I think of the Oklahoma game when you know when I didn't get to play that game. You know, I trusted Brian Correa, Coach Reynolds trusted him. Brian came in and had the game of his life, and and you know we ended up with a win. Um, and the defense, you know, they stepped up as well offensively. Our guys were well on point. So when when you have that kind of cohesiveness, like like Mitch was saying, and and, and everybody's on the same page, man, it's it's dangerous, and and you can you can pull off those those hard wins and and those wins that people kind of rule out yeah jeremy and i talked about this that this morning is an oft overlooked fact about that oklahoma game is that you didn't play you were our best <laughs> running back and you didn't even play in that game so that says something about that win uh, adds just a little bit more uh oomph to beating oklahoma now as we look at your career harvey you just uh, competed and participated in the first ever nfl veterans combine first of all how was it it was it was interesting. I'll say that you know it was a first time thing. So so they were definitely um, getting a lot of feedback from the players, from the vets, and, and they were um, you know trying trying to really get I guess improvements or, or insight on what they could do better, what what you know what the guys liked about it. Um, so it was it was a good you know learning process for them. It was a good. Um, opportunity for me to go out there and, and showcase, you know, what I can do still and, and um, you know, let these teams know that I'm, I'm still ready to play. And, and, you know, I'm willing and able. I've been busting my butt off. And, uh, it, you know, it was a good, fun experience. Aside from running the 40 uh, <laughs> and then hearing all these stupid times, you know, it was, it was frustrating. But I think the upside to it was everybody, you know, was consistent with running a crappy 40. So yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, I can live with that. If, if I'm running the same 40 times as these 200-pound running backs, then I'll, uh, you know, I'll take that with me. So you ran a 4.9 twice. Uh, yeah. Uh, were you faster, but the, the timing was off? That's the word, right? 
Well, supposedly that's what all the running backs were saying over there. I didn't bother to say anything because I figured if these smaller running backs are running four nines, then like I said, I can live with it. But uh, it, it was hard to say. They, you know, there, there was a kid named Sierra Wood, a couple other guys who were, you know, just last year was their rookie year, and at their pro day last year, they were running high four fives, low four sixes. And come to the combine, run four nines, and I don't think a guy loses a step you know, or three-tenths of a step in, in one season. It, it doesn't make sense to me at all. Um, so, so to me, you know, I think it, it was a different, you know, laser process. Uh, even guys at the Combines were, you know, were running slow. And, I mean, the fastest DB from what I heard was running a 4.6. Uh, so, if, if you know, if those are vets that are, you know, the fastest are running 4.6s, then, uh, you know, so, something's a little different. So I'll leave it at that. Not bad for old man Unga. So, <laughs> right. so, so yesterday, Spencer said that he thinks he can run a four nine forty, and so I said, "You think you can run faster than Harvey Unga right now?" And I said, "No, no, no. Oh, I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd run a five three with the uh, the clocks they were using at the, pro, the veteran con. But it's getting scared now. No, I think I can go sub five. Let's do it, man. On Friday. I, I, I believe in you. I think you can run that four nine. I mean, I was telling the scouts if, if we all ran four nine. The scouts should have came down there and ran with us because I'm sure they could catch us if we're running <laughs> Thank you, Harvey. So I appreciate it. We that. might throw Spencer yeah, out there on Friday at Pro Day Let's do it. Let's in some do tights it. <laughs> and just see what happens. What do you think? You can you can use my 40 cleats too if that'll Yeah. Help. All I right. Nice. All right. Hey Harvey, we need to have you on the show more often, man. I like I like hey, the optimism you bring. That's, that's a fact. I, I, I didn't I'm say there. yes or no. I was just saying you said that. <laughs> Speaking of pro day uh, on Friday, Harvey, uh, Brian Kill uh, joined us a little while ago, and I think you might have uh, said I can't remember if you said it on BYU Sports Nation or not, but that Paul Lasique is a guy that's under the radar that has a chance to make an NFL roster. Do you do you buy into that as Lasique with the best guy on this BYU team at in this pro day with a shot to make an NFL roster? I, I, um that that's hard to say. The the best guy, I don't know. Um there, there's you know there's some good guys coming out. So I, I I don't know if I'd say the best guy. Does he have an opportunity and a chance to play on an NFL team for sure. I, I think he definitely has the ability um, to do so uh, as, as long as he's willing, uh, you know, to, to get in there and, and um, do, do some special teams as well as fullback um, and, and running back. So, uh, yeah, I think he's definitely a potential NFL player. Um, would I say he's the best guy coming out for the pro day? Uh, that's, that's hard to say. Okay, let's finish with this. Is Paul faster than you? I'm sure he is. If, if I'm running a four nine, he better be running. More <laughs> Let's hope Paul's faster. <laughs> I'm praying that I, you know, a pro day he's running faster than a four nine. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey, great to talk to you. Wish you the best uh, as you continue to pursue your NFL career. And like I said, we'll, we're going to have you back on the show again because we like the optimism Sweet. that you bring. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. Good luck with the Jets. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs>